Hello everyone. I have been working on this um, contest for computer vision and um, it's a contest to create a saber fencing analytics um, system basically that uses computer vision to do that. Um, so it uses uh, data from camera to um, analyze the game basically. Uh, I took uh, permission from the contest owner uh, to share my some of my work um, with you on the channel and um, I get permission from him to do that so here we go um, we're creating an automated referring uh, system for saber fencing uh, if uh, you're like me and you didn't know what saber fencing before today it's like um, sword game where you uh, basically touch um, the other player on their upper body, so uh, waist up basically. Um, whenever you touch the other player, you have a light that will um, um, shine basically, and um, you can tell um, uh, that you score the point if your light is on. But in this case, it's complicated because both of their lights are on. So um, let's look at the basic rules. Uh, you score a point once your saber touches the other player's upper body. Um, if both uh, players hit within 120 milliseconds of each other, uh, the player with the right of way gets the point. The right way is a very complicated co um, um, uh, concept, but... Uh, in simpler terms, it's the attacker gets the point, basically. Deciding who has the right of way is a very complicated process, and I don't completely understand it yet. Um, but um, if uh, both players at, uh, attack at the same time and hit each other within 120 milliseconds, no point is awarded to ni uh, neither, of the, uh, neither of them. Um, so basically, if they just if they attack together, uh, at the same time, so they started the attack at the same time and they hit each other at the same time, no one uh, gets a point. Um, there are more rules. This is a long um, list of rules for uh, referees, basically. <coughs> you can find uh, more information about it. And, um, uh, you'll find links to uh, fencing on Wikipedia, fencing rules on Wikipedia, International Fencing um, Federation, and finally Sydney, uh, Sydney uh, Sabre. The um, goal here is to create a system that can detect scoring points and keep track of them. Um, so it will keep track of the result and detect scoring points basically um, so what are we doing in here exactly we're building a proof concept not the final system so we're building um, we shouldn't care much about how um, it looks now but it should um, um, do uh, enough well job um, so um, does our knowledge of saber fencing could could that affect uh, our ability to do the system um, in the mortal wars action of um, true conway i present the data science venn diagram um, it's a simple uh, diagram for that science to explain to you where are you from uh, on your um, uh, project basically um, so hacking skills these are programming skills, these are um, data mining skills, knowing about where to get the data, how to process it, things like that. Mathematical and um, statistical uh, knowledge, um, that's what you learn in uh, a math class or a uh, statistics class, basically. And so if you have um, both of these, you, ha you have uh, machine learning skills, but if you have... Um, um, uh, substantive um, experience uh, so let's assume for example you're a doctor um, if you learn some hacking skills like computer skills programming and things like this you're in a danger zone because you don't have um, mathematical and statistical uh, knowledge 
uh, it's a danger zone because you might do really um, you might get um, wrong results basically and you won't know it if you don't have mathematical and statistical knowledge um, so where are we on this project we have mathematical and statistical knowledge and we have hacking skills so we're in the machine learning and the more we will learn about Sci um, saber fencing throughout the project I hope we'll get closer and closer to data science doing that science on this project so what's the approach um, we'll start by feature extraction we'll track the lights the two lights on the players the red light and the green light in some situations the lights are fixed they're not on the player we'll uh, do some uh, OCR um, optical uh, character uh, recognition so basically we'll be reading the names of the player and the score and the round, things like that. Uh, we'll uh, be tracking uh, player location over time, so we know where is the player over time. Uh, then we have some pre-processing. Uh, we'll be splitting the game into rounds using uh, OCR and the score. So whenever the score changes, uh, it will split the video there because these are rounds then it will split these rounds into bouts or segments um, so um, sometimes two players will attack and none of them will get a point and they will go back to their uh, original place and they will have a second bout so these of uh, both of these bouts will be detected as a single round in here but then we'll have to split uh, these rounds into bouts if they if they have multiple uh, bouts they might have just um, one uh, bout in there. Uh, we'll be um, doing uh, image processing and computer vision. We'll do OCR for the score and player name. We'll be uh, doing uh, motion tracking for location uh, of um, red and left uh, players. And we'll be doing template matching to detect red light and green light. We'll be uh, doing some machine learning. Um, features from uh, player um, players motion uh, th um, and um, features from the light um, which light is on and if it's on or off um, the results of uh, each uh, segment or about is the uh, result that we want to predict basically in our machine learning predictive uh, model with the computer vision and uh, image processing We'll be working mainly with uh, OpenCV and uh, Scikit-Image. OpenCV is a computer vision library and it has capabilities to process video and extract uh, frames. Scikit-Image, on the other hand, is an um, image processing library that might come in handy for some advanced image processing. Um, I'm importing uh, all kinds of libraries in here. Um, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, uh, CV2, uh, is this is um, OpenCV um, library that we'll be mainly working with, and this is Scikit Image, SKE Image. Um, so uh, let's um, let's run this actually. So we'll import all the libraries, and then we'll open the video. We'll open the video with um, a video capture, creating a video capture object, and we'll pass um, this. Um, video to it um, I have this video here locally and I will not be sharing it but you can feel free to get any other video that you have in your machine to practice with um, we will uh, check after that if the um, if uh, it's um, if it uh, loaded the video using uh, is open uh, function that returns true or false if the video is open or not and um, it did not print unable to print uh, to open videos that means the video is um, working so let's start by uh, retrieving one frame from uh, this uh, video we can do that with the uh, function read so we uh, get our video capture object that read and it returns two variables, the image and a boolean um, telling us if it worked or not, uh, if, they're, uh, if it read a frame or not. And uh, finally, we'll be using matplotlib uh, uh, I am show to display that image.
and um, it did display this um, white image because the video has some uh, intro with white screen um, so uh, we can do this a few more times just to check that uh, you can and you can see things moving into the screen uh, by the way I'm um, executing the same field without moving to the next one with um, con with control and enter um, so in here I'll just uh, read 30 frames basically in a loop then I will show the next frame and we can see that we loaded this image of the actual game um, the first thing we can notice the the colors are off and this is because uh, OpenCV uses uh, BGR blue green red color scheme as default but almost every other library including matplotlib uses um, RGB as default so um, uh, OpenCV ha can convert to many many color schemes including uh, to RGB so we'll uh, be doing that with um, cv2 that um, cvt color convert color uh, you pass your image to it and a converter basically um, and here i'm using the um, B, um, bgr to rgb uh, converter and i'm storing my result in image underscore rgb so let's do that and we can see the colors are correct now um, we'll be inspecting the properties of the um, of the video capture object. Um, to do that, we use get uh, function. Then we pass a property ID. These properties are represented by um, integers. So this is zero, one, two, three, and you can pass any of these numbers. But uh, in here, I defined a small um, uh, dictionary, so we can find our um, objects in an easier way um, so let's um, execute this did I yeah um, and I will use uh, cap that get to get um, POS frames so the position of our current frame and it tells us that we're in frame 140 um, we can display all of um, these values and you can see um, POS uh, m milliseconds that shows us how many milliseconds um, for uh, our current position uh, POS frames this is um, our current frame POS uh, AVI ratio um, this is our ratio from the total so 0 is the beginning and 1 is the end uh, so we're at 4% basically um, frame um, width and frame uh, height so it's uh, 720 by uh, 1280 frames per second 25 uh, 4cc that's um, code it's a 4 liter code for our um, encoding or codec um, frame count this is the complete frame count of this video we have other things but they did not um, um, they are not written basically in the header of this file so we don't have results for them so uh, 4cc this is uh, I told you it's a 4 digit identifier for the codec um, so let's uh, this is a little function I wrote in here that reads basically this number converts it into hexadecimal and um, converts it back into l the four letters that uh, represent this uh, codec. So it's uh, AVC1, which is basically um, um, uh, MP4 format from Apple. Um, so um, we'll, uh, we want to see the video length and uh, current position. I wrote this uh, little function here that does that. It gets the frames per second it gets our current position and the total length of the video and it shows us where we are um, so we are at uh, 5 seconds and uh, 0.6 
and if we say in here false not current position it will show us the complete length of the video which is 5 minutes 44 seconds um, so uh, to um, show this image in a better way I um, I will be configuring uh, matplotlib uh, a little bit more to um, show the show a better image basically um, I'm uh, getting the height and, and width of uh, video um, uh, uh, adjusting the figure size um, then I'm reading a frame and um, converting the color uh, it's all things that we already covered then I'm showing um, the frame basically um, the one thing that you did not um, see before is instead of looping over the frames with um, read and here I'm using set so I'm setting frame position to the frame passed in this function so to get frame 130 I just pass frame 130 and I get the frame uh, I can um, change this uh, frame to another one but let's do something even uh, nicer um, in here I'm um, calculating the total number of frames um, and I'm using a widget in here to um, browse through frames from 130 to 500 so I can just slide this and it will um, show us the video so basically in here both of them they touch at the same time uh, we can just scroll back a few frames to show that in here they both hit at the same time and uh, no one scored a point uh, because of that so you can see the both of their lights are on at the same time uh, let me get the first uh, yeah they hit each other uh, so um, the right player hit first uh, at 245 just to measure a single frame just to tell you how long a single frame represents it represents in this video for 40 milliseconds so um, we can uh, see that uh, that's um, basically between them is only 40 milliseconds between the first light was on and the second light so um, so this light is on then this is 40 milliseconds 80 milliseconds and the other light was on so that's less than 120 milliseconds um, I hope you um, uh, like this and it's available on um, github and it's viewable on MB Viewer. feel free to use this um, source code for any um, computer vision work that you might be doing uh, I hope if you like this you will subscribe to this channel and if you're feeling a little um, left behind because of the programming you can go and watch a series about uh, IPython where I cover uh, a lot of the basics uh, or you can watch the next part of this series um, where we will be building an uh, OCR basically to read the score thank you for watching